So I'm here with Dr Pauline Mackay and she's going to answer some questions about Robert Burns that have been asked over the internet. Go for it. Well this should be interesting. The first one is from Greg in Dundee and he wants to know when the first ever Burns Supper took place. It's believed the first ever Burns Supper took place in 1801 to commemorate Burns' death. It's believed that they ate haggis, they toasted Burns' memory with some whiskey and of course at the centre of that celebration was Burns' poetry and song. Ah, this for sour me. The next question is from Kevin in Los Angeles. So he was wondering why do you stab the haggis? To a haggis, it's a very performative poem. Certainly people get carried away with it and they stab the haggis at the end so that it spills out and it's all there in the poem. Your groaning trenches, there you fill. So this next question is from Bill Malloy, and he was wondering if Burns has ever been accused of plagiarism. Burns certainly collected traditional Scottish songs. Sometimes he adapted them, sometimes he rewrote them, and sometimes he wrote new words to existing Scottish tunes. If Burns hadn't done that, we would probably have lost so many examples of Scottish traditional verse. So the next question is from Jason in Dallas and he wanted to know if Burns considered himself more of a poet or a songwriter. The answer is both and at different stages in his career. Certainly early in his career, Burns does refer to himself as a poet. By the time he reaches the end of his career, he is very focused on writing and collecting songs for those collections. So this question is from Zara, age nine, and she wanted to know if uh, Burns had any pets and did he write about them? Burns would have had a lot of contact with animals and we see that he's inspired by them. He writes to a mouse, he writes him the death and dying words of poor Melee. But famously, Burns had a favourite dog named Luth and Luth becomes one of the main characters in the poem, The Tall Dogs. I've always wanted a goldfish. So this question is from Jean and Glenn Rothes and she mm. wants to know when Burns was alive, did he know he was good and how famous was he? He was an extremely talented man and I think he was aware that he was a good poet. He did enjoy a little bit of celebrity. Unfortunately, Burns still had to make ends meet, he still had to return to farming and remarkably, Burns died in debt, but now one of the world's most famous poets. Oh, stop it. You're embarrassing me now. So this question is from Heather in Ayrshire and she wanted to know if Burns uh, has been presented with awards when he was alive and uh, after he passed away. Not any official awards, but can there be any greater recognition than being the Scottish National Bard and being celebrated every single year all over the world at Barn Suppers? I'm thank it to my mother and I'm thank it to my feather. So I wanted to know why we eat haggis and drink whiskey um, at Barn Supper because of its association with Burns, haggis has become the Scottish national dish. Burns also mentions whiskey in his poetry and song. For example, freedom and whiskey gang together. You can't forget the whiskey. At New Year's all over the world, it's kind of traditional to sing Old Lang Syne and I wanted to know why that is. Burns' version has become one of the world's most famous songs, second perhaps only to Happy Birthday. The sentiment of the song is universal. It's about brotherhood, it's about humanity and that's one of the reasons it's become so popular. So I was wondering what your favourite Burns work was as you're such an enthusiast. Oh there are so many to choose from but if you really want to put me on the spot, Tam O'Shanter is actually one of the world's favourite Burns poems and it's mine too. Ah yes, Tam O'Shanter. I was very proud of that works. Well, cheers to that. Cheers. Can I ask you though? How do you know so much about me? Because Robert Burns, you are my life's work. Oh.